good morning ladies and gentlemen thank you very much my dear dr mansi sabu and dr sasang joshi and all the organizers and thank you very much chairperson for their kind introduction today my topic is precision medicine in cardio diaptology the aim of the talk is hit hard hit hard to save the life of acute coronary syndrome and acutely decompensate heart failure hit fast to increase the in, increase the ejection fraction and to live at least 85 years here is the patient mr subramani 46 years old 46 years old male came to the emergency department with the following vital signs and ecg echo everything this is the conclusion middle aged male tobacco chewer acute antral mi with ejection fraction of 30 it is ready half rough reduced ejection fraction 30% and moderate dyslipidemia and blood sugar is high and high bp you cannot call it a hypertension high bp 160 by 100 how will you acutely decompensate heart failure acute pulmonary edema and patient not willing for thrombolysis and window period is more than 12 hours and severe lv dysfunction acute pulmonary edema acute kidney injury stage 1 this is the urea creatinine value 25.5 creatinine 1.2 lipid profile also shows moderate dyslipidemia how will you go ahead with this in the emergency department in icu so before treating this patient and before talking about the precision medicine of cardio diaptology nowadays the terminology has been completely changed the terminology no more heart failure lack of improvement in the marker of the heart failure that is nt pro pnb if it is not improved you have to update it and updated it should be in the heart failure no more it's a persistent heart failure it is stable no more you cannot call it a uh, stable heart failure it's a persistent heart failure so prompt action should be taken and appropriately it has to be treated because heart failure any time patient may die even the patient is stable even a stage the clip class 1 and 2 also can die due to sudden cardiac death or hospitalization of heart failure so you have to be very so stable heart failure is a missed normal terminology so paradise heart failure trial the death in 80 81% of the death in paradigm heart failure is due to the cardiovascular death out of that 45% is due to sudden cardiac death even the sudden cardiac death can occur in stable heart failure that is called stage clip class 1 and 2 when you are using using uh, when when we are using uh, orni in this heart failure patients on top of mra 55% and beta blocker 93% you can reduce the heart failure sudden cardiac death by 22% if you use orni rather than you, you, it, you cannot get a sudden cardiac death reduction with enalapril ac inhibitor but it can reduce the hospitalization the heart failure but it can, it will not reduce the risk of sudden cardiac death so 2022 american heart association and heart failure heart failure society of america and acc all guidelines is released in 2022 february so after that there are lot of changes are there so terminology also change stage a b c d so stage a it's a at risk for heart failure so hold hypertension obesity dyslipidemia and diabetes no heart failure no structural heart disease or functional heart disease no nsm elevation no in elevation in the nt pro bnb and in, and e for e ratio is normal and congenital heart disease and there is a genetic genetically family history of cardiomyopathy all the risk factor at risk it's having so whether to, to start the treatment you have to control the all the risk factors stage b pre heart failure like pre diabetes the free heart failure here e bar e ratio will be arised that is lv diastolic dysfunction no structural heart disease nt pro bnb may not be elevator but e bar e ratio is elevator and you have to address and nt pro bnb is slightly elevated elevated in the absence of the structural heart disease only e bar e ratio is elevated so pre heart failure stage c is a symptomatic heart failure of rough patient you have to address properly with five pillars of heart failure stage d advanced heart failure various 
device therapy, all the things you have to do it. So, five pillars, they are talk, calling so four pillars, I am calling so five pillars of heart failure. All five pillars has to be put, uh, has to be cut deep. So, now this is the class 1A indication. Or knee, AC or ARB, the patient is on AC or ARB, even you are getting a benefit, you have to switch over to or knee. Or knee, here, that is a class B indication, 1B indication. Beta blocker, that is metaprolol, sustained release metaprolol and bisoprolol, bisoprolol and corvidilol. These are all the three drugs can be used. Nebibilol is good. These three drugs are used for treating the heart failure. And, or, uh, and MRA, mineral aquatic receptor blocker, pyrinolactone, epilrone, quinirnone. This and evidence, lot of evidence I will be, go through it. And nowadays I have added evaporidine also. Nowadays in the Janssen study also, uh, how will they give the prognosis by seeing the pulse and BP. That's all. These two often missed, often under, underutilized. These two signs is very important. So you have to keep the heart rate with it is not reducing, you have to update it the drugs. And for all the drugs, you have to give that you have to give the various five plus of drugs. How will you initiate, intensify, and titrate? So beta blocker or knee or a HCL to and evaporin. How will you initiate and up titrate? So the AC inhibitor or ARB the patient is not affordable, or in the ICU, the patient is having a decommon heart failure. Start with the AC inhibitor. Or ARB. The drug of choice is AC inhibitor because audio selective myocytes will be audio selective case will be inhibited only by AC inhibitor. If not tolerated, only you have to put them on, on ARB. And acutely decommerce heart failure. Once a heart failure it's de decommerced to compensate, immediately you have to start them on ARNI to get a fantastic benefit to reduce the. Uh, they, so every AC or ARB, once in two weeks, you have to update rate or down rate it. Beta blocker, I, I, I have enumerated three important beta blocker. And every two weeks, you have to titrate the beta blocker. And diuretics, do it acutely becomes heart failure. Diuretic loop, diuretic start with, depends upon the acuteness, you have to start with loading dose and slowly update it. Continuous IV in of loop diuretics, uh, mandatory, control the acutely. For the common heart failure and high relation isosorbate dinated American African patient still heart failure is not adequate control. He can very well give the uh, high relation isosorbate dinated. My boss, cardiologist Dr. Chaniyapan, used to say this is the one of the important role in Indian patient, especially right to heart failure with renal dysfunction. Definitely, it has got a role. Definitely, it is an iron therapy. There is MRA or it's called all those antagonists. It has got a wonderful role. It depends upon the packet many, jacket many, you can give pyrinolactone or epilrone. And nowadays, epilrone is available, it's 25 rupees. And it's, uh, it, is, it reduces the mortality rate in the heart failure. And epilrone has got a wonderful role in 2020, 2023. That's a fantastic benefit. When that only more molecule reduces, it has got an anti-inflammatory action and anti-fibrotic action, not only in the kidney, the heart also. Pinirnon has to be started if the EGFR is more than 20, 20 milligram, 25 to 60, 10 milligram, less than 25, 25 it's a contraindicator. And addition is contraindicated, meteorology is contraindicated. Only thing is 75 rupees. And here the dosage titration is if the EG, the potassium, <coughs> potassium is more than 5.5, stop the drug and treat on after that you have to, you have to add. If the potassium is less than 4.5 milligram, the age, age uh, you have to start with 20 milligram, 20 milligram the adult, and uh, uh, more than 75 age group, 10 milligram, you have, you have, you have to start, you have to update it. 4.8 to 5.5, maintain 10 milligram, and if the patient is on 20 milligram, you maintain 20 milligram. If it is more than 5.5, you have to phone or you can reduce the dose. The phenylone. That is the molecule of the need of the, the game, game changer is 2023. That is HLD2 inhibitor and ORNI and phenirnone. These three are game changers. Nowadays, 10 years, 10, 15 years back, my uh, 10 years are used uh, tell us actually great for diastolic dysfunction. Within one year, baby patient will die. 
Not like that nowadays. If we molecule, they are living more than five years, six years with clinical experience. This is the only molecule has got anti-inflammatory action and anti-fibrotic action. Not only the kidney, it has got in the heart also. And this molecule is a bulky molecule as there is no CNS cross effect, the CNS side effect will not be there. Highly selective sexual hygienogamastia will not be there. Short lifespan, so a lot of side effects will not be there like spironolactone. spironolactone. So 2022 ADA guidelines also says that is when the patient is having AD, those who are having a increased risk for, risk for uh, cardiovascular events or CKD progression, CKD progression, and the patient is not tolerating HLT2, definitely you have to add, it's a class 1A indication, you have to add phenylalanine. The patient is having cardiovascular risk patient, that is diabetes with CKD patient, that when the patient is on AC or ARB, AC inhibitor especially, uh, even the maximum tolerated, titrated dose, uh, you have to add you have to add yeah, or need that MRA, MRA that is printed known to reduce the cardiovascular mortality as well as as well as risk for CKD progression. You have to add the class 1A indication. So fifth molecule for the heart failure, fifth pillar of heart failure is that is evapidin. Evapidin, you have to maintain the heart rate between 50 to 60. 50 to 60. The age group is more than more than 75, start with 2.5 milligram BAD, less than 75, 5 milligram BAD. Only you have to update it every every week. You have to update. You have to see every two weeks only. You have to update it or count it. The heart rate is maintained less than 50 and symptomatic. You have to reduce the dose 50 to 60. Asymptomatic, you maintain the same dose. If it is more than 60, you have to add. The patient is on 2.5 milligram BAD, increase 5 milligram. The patient is on already 5 milligram BAD, add another 2.5, that is 7.5 milligram BAD. This is the Thing. This is the goal directed medical therapy, GDMT, five pillars of heart failure you have added. So, or and that the reduced ejection fraction is the criteria. So, you are adding five pillars of heart failure till the patient is not improving. Improving, uh, that is NIH class three or four, you have to add hydrolysin, hydrolysin, isosorbide, and still, and many patients, the important acutely recombinant heart failure, that is cathelab center, immediately take them for. Uh, primary PDCA or rescue PDCA or uh, after that secondary PDCA, ICD therapy, CRT and all the things. Still with refractory, that is a mechanical cardiac support or cardiac transplant you can plan or palliative therapy. So this patient, patient managed with all the drugs and acutely decommers heart failure, acute palindrodema, prompt of position, uh, NIV support, non-invasive cardiovascular non-invasive ventilatory support and all five pillars of heart failure started even you know, the hyperglycemia fios has been ultrasound started and um, patient improved second day also again patient developed acute pulmonary edema so cpr nav support again it came came down uh, come up hypotension managed with a noradrenaline trip acute kidney stage one progress to stage two and diuretic therapy escalated and this electrolytemia managed and corrected and fourth day, fourth day, so acutely come at the first time, first day acute pulmonary edema, second day acute pulmonary edema, in the evening within 12 hours, the commerce that is converted to commerce of heart failure. So, second day I have started on the morning, Ramipril, that is AC in the want to switch over to Orni, at least 36 hours interval should be there. So, after 36 years, 36 hours interval period, I have started from Orni, that is 50 milligram BID, on fourth day, it has been stopped. Every day, you have to estimate potassium electrolytes, potassium and serum creatinine. The important thing, ORNI, don't hesitate. Many cardiologists also hesitant to use ORNI. Here, already on AC or ARB, you have to switch over to ORNI. And patient is on uh, EFR is more than 30, potassium 5.2. Two important practical problem. I want to tell you, if the patient BP is more than 100, maintaining for 6 to 24 hours, 24 hours, uh, patient is not on inotropic support, please start them on ARNI. If the patient is not in the dose of diuretic for the last six hours, please start them on ARNI immediately. For today itself, it has been the patient started, we have started ARNI because the start initiating the ARNI is very important. First two weeks, this study has told 
uh, two third of the benefit of heart failure management just five minutes sir. so heart failure first three weeks only you are getting the fantastic benefit two third of the heart failure will be reduced if you are using heart early first two weeks two third benefit after one year another 25 percent one and it in the content that is LB remodeling is reported by if is reported by 13 and not the target also 9.4 9.4 and first 20 first month 36 percent reduction in the reduction in the cardiovascular current cardiac cardiovascular mortality as well as hospital heart failure second month 42 percent reduction negative reduction so it has been started fourth day sixth day again then the creatine is increasing so i have not stopped creatine is so far it's in more than 50 percent you have to stop stop it is 30 to 50 percent only 50 so i am reducing the dose and again i will escalate and if it is less than 30 percent you can continue again so this sixth day it has been of uh, uh, 50 milligram bid it has uh, de-escalated by 50 milligram od and on our started and hypotension is good and the tenth day again 50 milligram to 50 milligram it's reported 1.8 to 1.3 so it, i have escalated the orni 50 milligram to 50 milligram bad even orni can be used in the hypotensive patient 100 or 90 uh, pro provided organ therapy perfect so it has got a 12 percent reduction that is of cardiovascular death and hospitalization heart failure and all call for the all cause mortality reduction by person escalated 50 milligram bad hyperkalemia used to be orni don't stop orni you have to reduce the dose potassium restriction and hypertensive drug should be reduced and after that only you have to reduce and the escalation escalation rule should be applied and other comorbidities should be addressed the patient's acute coronary syndrome primary pdca the patients on that is arrhythmia that is atrial fibrillation you have to re that's our radio ablation therapy and various that is cardiac ic trt and mechanical device everything you have to do and ion therapy iv ion therapy has to be given this is target and uh, hyperglycemia has to be addressed properly i that's hlt didn't in the first day itself it can give whether this uh, unless it's contraindicated or glp on receptor agonist combative heart failure metformin can be used the preferable sulfonylurea glycoside and glimipride and 30th day it's go to the improved ejection fraction previously excuse me now, excuse me dr panali please please because slide. there are so many lectures and we last, will go last slide. Improved ejection previously 40 percent now more than 40 percent so this patient also highly reduced ejection fraction preserved ejection fraction also all four pillars can be indicated class 2a indication uh, on discharge everything improved ejection fraction and mild ejection fraction all properly treated with drugs ion therapy take home my message is cardio diabetology so you have to use high pillars of heart failure nowadays it is our knee as well as it can be it can be EF 30 percent 30 percent through to 41 percent so it has to be addressed it has to be used adequately if are very, very important early diagnosis of heart failure diastolic and comorbidity should be addressed so nowadays the new terminology improved ejection so if you use hld on our knee and mineral aquatic receptor that is known it can reduce mortality Mobility, a patient definitely, definitely live longer. They will live for 100. Definitely, all the game changers of all the game changers of uh, heart failure, comorbid condition, also ion therapy, all device therapy, atrial fibrillation, and various various mechanical device. Everything you have to address. A is that is CS that apnea, and that is uh, other that also it has to be CPAP has to be appropriate prescribed longer generally diabetic patient or non-diabetic patient or will live longer they will live uh, even more than 85 thank you very much for the thank thank you dr